Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the City of Independence, I welcome each of you in attendance, as well as those of you who are watching this meeting on City 7, to the June 11, 2019 meeting of the Independence Planning Commission. Before we begin our meeting, let's stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For those of you who are unfamiliar with our meetings, it is the responsibility of this commission to hold public hearings and make recommendations to the Independent City Council on matters relating to zoning and land use changes within our city. We also consider and make decisions on plats, special use permits, and other issues as well as changes in codes and policies, policies that relate to city planning. Our procedure for each case is as follows. First. The applicant will be recognized to speak on behalf of their case, followed by anyone else in attendance that wishes to speak in favor of the matter. Second, those who are in opposition or who have questions regarding the case will then be recognized to speak. If there was opposition or questions from the public, the applicant will be allowed a rebuttal period to address those concerns and or questions. And once the applicant is finished, the chair will declare the public hearing portion of the case closed and further comment from the public will not be recognized. Then at that point, the commissioners will have the opportunity to discuss the merits of the case with one another. And during that discussion, the commission reserves a right to ask questions of all parties concerned. And then finally, the commission will render a decision in the case. Because this is the only public hearing of the cases on the agenda tonight and all those who wish to speak will be heard. All comments and questions should be addressed to the chair and not directly to the applicant or to the staff. The chair also requests that statements be kept brief and on point and that if a statement has already been made by a previous speaker, please do not repeat it, but simply indicate your agreement with that speaker on the matter. Now, to expedite tonight's meeting, the chair asks that everyone who wishes to testify or who believes that they may testify, please stand now and be sworn in. Those standing, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth before this commission? If so, please answer, I do. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, we're going to start by taking uh, item number three, other business. Um, that case has been asked to be continued till the June 25th commission meeting, and I believe we have to take a vote on that, correct? That's right. Okay. So do I have a motion? Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. In the matter of case number 19-400-02, short-term rental at 224 North Delaware Street. That case, I move that that case be continued to the June 25th commission meeting. Okay, and I believe, has that been changed to 03 instead of 02? That's right, it should be, it will be. Okay, okay. All right, thank you, Billy. Do I have another? I second. All right. We have a move and a second, so let's take the vote. Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Goldsberry? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner Wiley? Yes. Commissioner McLean? Yes. Chairman Ashbaugh. Yes. Case number 19-400-03, short-term rental 224 North Delaware Street has been continued till June 25th. The next public hearing is case number 19-100-06, rezoning of 13000 East Kentucky Road. <clears throat> okay, Jim Gamble on behalf of Paul and Bonnie Wilson seeks to rezone part of the property at 13,000 East Kentucky Road from R6, which is single family residential, to I-1 Industrial. The oval shows the site on East Kentucky Road in the northwest corner of the city. The northern part of the property, of the owner's property is in Sugar Creek. The next picture shows the uh, zoning for the area. 
with the property in the oval zoned R6 single family zoning uh, along with the surrounding property in the in the actual city of Independence the owners of the land and the owners land in Sugar Creek is zoned M1 which is light industrial this is an aerial photo of the site the owner lives in a house in the southeast corner of the property with the area to be rezoned to I-1 being north and west of the house. As you can see in the photo, the uh, applicant's property is in that house in the lower right. This is the, uh, the slide better illustrates the shaded L-shaped area sought to be rezoned to I-1. The owner's house in the southeast corner of the land will retain its R-6 zoning. This is the, uh, here we're on the driveway that leads to, to the construction company's business in Sugar Creek. As you can see, some of the construction equipment. The owner's house is to the right, just off the screen. This is another photo of the construction business in Sugar Creek. This is the driveway, the commercial driveway that leads down to the uh, commercial property or industrial property in Sugar Creek. This is the building that uh, shows up on the earlier slide where a portion of it approximately 40% of the building is in Independence with the rest being in Sugar Creek. And this is a uh, photo, another photo of the property. Pack shows a better uh, view of what the property itself looks like uh, with the VFW hall in the background, which is located in Sugar Creek. <coughs> Here we're standing in Kentucky Road in front of the applicant's driveway looking west the city limit sign for Sugar Creek is just down the road. The VFW post is to the right, just off the screen. That's the driveway to the VFW post. <coughs> this is looking at residential property to the south across Kentucky Road from the applicant's property. Here we're looking up Kentucky Road to the east. And then this is the owner's house in the southeast part of the land facing Kentucky Road. Staff recommends approval of this application. Thank you, Stuart. Does anyone have questions of Stuart before we proceed with the uh, re applicant's report? Okay, would the applicant please come forward? And of course, make sure you state your name and address for the record, please. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the commission, uh, my name is Jim Gamble. I live in 3500 South Myers Ridge Court in Independence, Missouri, and have an architecture firm and have had one for a number of years here in the city of Independence. Um, I represent the Wilson family, the Will Pave Company, and the Wilson family, which is a multi generational organization. Paul and Bonnie Wilson live in the house, the single family house that you saw on the property. And then uh, their son Rick and grandson RJ is here with us today. And I presume will continue on for multiple generations later. <coughs> they perform uh, services for the metropolitan area. They do uh, uh, paving, have done asphalt paving for many years. They do uh, concrete uh, curb and gutter work and I think at times do work for the City of Independence as well as other contractors. Um, I was contacted uh, approximately two years ago by uh, uh, Rick Wilson and uh, with an interest of building a new building on their property and uh, the, the red one that you saw on the screen and adjacent directly to the uh, east of the uh, uh, VFW post. Uh, at the time, I, uh, uh, I contacted the City of Independence and to receive where exactly the measurement of the jurisdictional line was and was given a number of, at the, we used in our drawing at the time for rezoning and also for the construction documents that 
that time took place entirely in the city of Sugar Creek. So uh, the building was, uh, there was a sliver of land that they purchased from the VFW Post, and uh, that was rezoned to their M1, uh, their equivalent of an industrial uh, zoning in Sugar Creek, and I went through that process and then did contract documents, construction documents for building a new building of which they built and finished in 2018. <coughs> Afterward, um, there was an interest in the family of splitting the property. The uh, single family home uh, had other properties surrounding it and they wanted to be able to convey that property at some future date to uh, split that from other property and hired a surveyor to, uh, uh, to uh, get uh, uh, corner uh, uh, survey points. And in the process of creating a uh, uh, replatting document uh, discovered uh, through their investigation that the jurisdictional line was approximately 33 feet to the south. This is now after the building is already built and uh, the plat maps or the uh, rezoning maps have been filed with the city of Sugar Creek and all the work had been done and so on. So there must have been an interesting conversation from uh, uh, maybe Tom Scannell might have called uh, the Wilsons and Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Wilson, uh, would you mind pretty please if you would please rezone this property of the property that is now sticking in Independence for 33 feet and, uh, and zone this into a, an appropriate zoning for the building. And uh, I would have liked to uh, uh, been uh, per, uh, 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 privy to that conversation, but at any rate, the result now is that the Wilsons are accommodating and have contacted me and asked me to help uh, uh, rezone this property for the, per for the portion you saw on the replatting map that now the jurisdictional line is further, uh, further to the north, excuse me, yes, further to the north, and so it exposes like 33 feet of the building uh, now in Independence. So the purpose of this is kind of a cleanup exercise to, uh, uh, to properly zone this. At some future point, I suppose there would be a, maybe there's a red line on the paving of the, uh, of the uh, inside of the building and one side is Independence and the other side is Sugar Creek and they uh, keep a log uh, with a clipboard uh, 50 times a day of how many times uh, an action takes place. They'll total those up at the end of the year and then that percentage will be the amount of taxes they pay to Independence and the other will be to Sugar Creek. So at any rate, uh, uh, I'm here to answer any questions. Uh, Mr. R.J. Wilson is here with me and uh, if you have any questions of either of us, we're here to uh, assist. Thank you, Jim. Are there any questions? Okay. I'll take this opportunity to simply say, I applaud the diligence of the family and their integrity for coming forward and disclosing and attempting to do the right thing. Uh, we'll just see how much blood is shed in this <laughs> process. I yield back, Mr. Chair. Thanks. Okay, any, all right. Well, thank you right, very thank much. You. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak in favor of this case? Is there anyone here who is opposed or who has questions? Okay, seeing no movement in the crowd, we'll declare the public hearing portion closed. And we would like comments or questions? Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. We, I'd like to entertain a motion. Go ahead. 
in the matter of case number 19-100-01 rezoning at 1300-13000 East Kentucky Road that we rezone this from R6 single family residence to I1 industrial. I move that that be adopted. Thank you. Second. Okay. Thanks for jumping in there. Appreciate it. Um, okay. We have a motion in a second. <clears throat> Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Goldberry? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner Wiley? Yes. Commissioner McLean? Yes. Chairman Ashbaugh? Yes. Case number 19-100-06 rezoning for 1300 13,000 East Kentucky Road has been approved. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Our next case, case number 19-100-07, rezoning of 2001 East Jackson Drive. The city give the report, please. Uh, David Castro with Castro Architect seeks to rezone the property at 2001 East Jackson Drive from 01, which is office residential to C2 General Commercial. The oval shows the site on Jackson Drive, which is just uh, west of the Little Blue Parkway in the Hartman Heritage Center. Until it closed a couple years ago, the site was a Joe's Crab Shack restaurant. This is the zoning for the property with the site in the oval again. It is on C01, excuse me, along with other lots on the south side of Jackson Drive. On the north side of Jackson Drive, the development is all zoned C2 General Commercial. This is an aerial of the site. It's just south of Jackson Drive and north of I-70, again in the oval. Two office buildings are to the east, with restaurants and a hotel to the west. To the north of, across Jackson Drive is a retail component of Hartman Heritage with a strip center and a couple out parcels for restaurants. This drawing shows the, uh, the site with the 185 foot circle notification around the property. Okay, th here's the front of uh, the former Joe's Crab Shack restaurant along Jackson Drive. This is the, de I call it the de facto front of the restaurant, which is the east elevation. The restaurant did leave some of its exterior decor and signage. Um, this is the southeast corner of the building look at the east looking at the east and south elevation That is an outdoor patio area there if you've not been to the restaurant uh, in that uh, corrugated metal surrounding with a roof uh, This is uh, <clears throat> Here we're looking north across Jackson Drive at the uh, strip center of Hartman Heritage And this is uh, looking to the east that is the Giha uh, office building and another office building next to that. This is, uh, we're standing at the back of the restaurant looking south across I-70. That's the traffic of I-70 right there in the foreground with uh, restaurants and uh, hotels and so forth in Eastland Center on the south side of I-70. Here we're looking to the west. This is a restaurant, one of the two restaurants th that are west of the site. And this is uh, looking West, northwest down uh, Jackson Drive, that is a uh, the hotel there off in the distance and there are a couple of restaurants there on the left behind the uh, sidewalk. Um, staff recommends approval of this application. Uh, they are seeking to rezone this property. Um, restaurants would be allowed in an 01 district, but the applicants is unsure they would meet the standards for a restaurant which would be 50% 50, 50 or more of their revenues and food they may be higher with the alcohol sales part of it so hence that's why we're here as a tavern the nightclub classification instead of a restaurant classification so you can't have a a, a, a bar tavern in, in an office it no. has to be in a c2 that's correct okay It doesn't affect any taxes, does it, or anything, or does it? As in 
what sort of you mean his property taxes yeah I wouldn't think so because the the restaurant's already there it's been a restaurant before um, it would be probably similar to when Joe's was open and operating okay all right and this was initiated by the city or by the owner no by the uh, applicants that's okay. right okay does anybody else have questions of of Stuart before we have the applicant come forward okay uh, please state your name and address for our records please okay my name is David Castor Castor Architects 7304 West 130th Street Overland Park Kansas thank you sir just um, give us a little information okay. about how this all came about all right um, uh, the ownership group I'm working with is called the Dark Side of the Spoon, and they're based in Des Moines. Um, they have locations, uh, uh, several different restaurant concepts in Des Moines and Omaha. This will be their first location in Kansas City. And I think they're, they're not sure how, since they haven't been in this market yet, if they're going to fit within that 50% threshold. So that's they didn't want to risk not being in compliance, so they're just coming at this would be the proper protocol to go to C2 zoning okay well sure we, and we appreciate their uh, their conscience and their d diligence f trying to comply with our rules so you can tell them thank you I I don't know that anybody has any questions I mean it seems pretty straightforward um, to me so unless you have more information to give us I guess that's that's all we need from you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. You, you know the drill. You got questions or is there a motion? Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think the hearing is still open. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just. You're right. <laughs> Um, is there anyone else here who's in favor of this um, motion, this um, case? Okay, is there anyone else here who has questions or is, it, is against? I'm sorry, yes, have you been sworn in, sir? Okay, why don't you come up here to the podium and we'll get that done and then uh, you can, after you're sworn in, give me your name and uh, Address for the records, please. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth before this commission? If so, answer, I do. I do. Thank you, sir. What's your name and uh, your address? Uh, my name is Doug Morris. My address is 2705 Janwood Avenue, The Villages, Florida, 32162. Okay. All right, and what's your question and or comment? Well, I own the building. Uh, uh, Parkway Properties and own the LLC that owns the building to the east and uh, right now my tenant is Park University okay uh, they have classes from 5 to 10 30 at night and I just don't know what kind of element this was going to bring to that uh, neighborhood being uh, right next door uh, I had problem with when Joe's was there they would park in my parking lot they would come over there. Uh, I caught them climbing on my building. Uh, people over there, you know, just eating and drinking and having fun. They're waiting around, and you know, I, they're they're standing in the window wells. I just, uh, for me, uh, I'm concerned about what kind of element that brings to that community, that part of Jackson County, and one of my major tenants. Uh, you know, if they're there from five to ten thirty, teaching classes, and having students there. Uh, who's going to be, I mean, what I understand this is, is pretty much a bar. Okay. Um, we can ask the applicant of that, that question. I don't really have a comment right now about that, but I understand your point. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, I, uh, I, it, it's a major investment of mine. I just don't want to see, uh, what, I, I don't want to see Eastern Jackson County or Independence or uh, get that type of image. We already have uh, Twin Peaks right up the street. 
uh, that's pretty much just a bar yeah. uh, with food. But, I mean, how much more of this are we going to permit? Don't we? Well, I, I think uh, more of a restaurant uh, that, you know, has normal business hours and a clientele that's more suited for the surrounding of that neighborhood, uh, it, it makes more sense to me. Uh, and um, the longevity of my investment. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else here who has questions or is opposed to this? All right. I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. No, you need to give the applicant a time for rebuttal. Need to have him come up and answer that question. <clears throat> okay. All right, please come forward and answer that question, sir. Um, as the report points out, the building <clears throat> has been vacant for about two years, and I've been inside the building, and it has a lot of roof leaks, puddles of water after the big rains we've had. So I think the project has had a lot of time to sit and look for another restaurant to come in, which hasn't happened. We are a restaurant, but we also serve drinks. Uh, it's, it's a country theme. Um, they're gonna have, you know, a little, uh, like during the week, it'll be heavier into the food. The weekends, they do wanna open it up to where they can have a little area for like a dance floor uh, in one corner of the restaurant. So, um, I mean, we are a drinking and a food establishment together, and is why we wanted to come before you on this. Okay. Can you tell us the ratio of food versus the alcohol? Can you? Well, that's what we can't. Some of their okay. existing facilities, and they have a lot of different restaurant type groups, um, a lot of those fall way over 50% in food. Um, they just don't know on the shotgun Betty's when it comes to Kansas City, what the draw is gonna be. I see. And this is the first location that they're looking at here, so they, they can't really say. Okay. Will there be live bands, live music? There is gonna be a stage area. It's not very big, but it would uh, accommodate if you wanted you know, a singer and a drummer or whatever, mm -hmm. live music. What's the estimated occupancy in terms of number of people that the building can accommodate? I think the current is uh, 270, roughly. The kitchen area, because it was a Joe's Crab Shack, they had a large kitchen area. Mm -hmm. We're getting rid of a portion of that, which is where this raised area for a little stage platform would be. And in terms of parking ratio to occupancy, What's your estimated parking capacity? We do have locations to add parking. We're not really asking for that right now because mm -hmm. it already has so much parking. Um, it has a hundred and I can't even read this one. 125 spaces, I think. Do you know if it was in that report, Stuart? Um, I was thinking it was. I think it's 105 are required by the current occupancy. Mm. But I think that it right now has, um, I want to say like 115. So it's at least 10 over where the current uh, count would allow. Is there a berm or some type of division between the two buildings? Do we have actual? Do we have uh, a there's a landscape area. Mm -hmm. There might be some bushes, but I don't think there's a berm elevation there. You know, all of Hartman Heritage was master planned, you know, in 19, probably 99 or 98. And it was built pretty much to that design with the meandering sidewalks and the sign to be of a certain style and shape. And uh, how the buildings were 
to be separated with the landscaped islands and so forth. And it's still pretty much true today that it hasn't changed that much. Okay. Commissioner McLean mentioned a berm. You're an architect. That's your Billy Watt. What could you do in terms of design to create an aesthetically pleasing barrier that would both potentially reduce sound and would tend to create a barrier where people are less likely to meander over into the adjoining property. Do you think you could create something like that? Um, sound, probably not, because sound will even go like at a well, highway I, barrier, we, but we, um, you could do a berm. Mm -hmm. The property line, I think the median area is only about 12 feet maybe between from one parking lot to the other the center would be the property line so you'd have to have mm. you know the owner of the other building agree to let you do landscaping on their property to build a berm or uh, you know anything you could put in there that would discourage people from crossing that line and the parking lots don't actually join I noticed from the only way to get is once you pull off Jackson Drive you have to go left or right right then there's no other walkway, sidewalk, or any connection between the two parking lots. So we could add some landscaping there to fuller, you know, further discourage <clears throat> someone cutting through and parking on the adjacent property. Stuart, would there be any landscaping necessary anyway because of the code change? No, uh, it's commercial property. It's on both sides now. There's no okay. requirement. The applicant may think about putting like a uh, I don't want to say a fence, but some sort of, like, uh, since it's a, a Western theme, maybe some sort of a split rail fence or something through across there. I don't know. Here's some options available. And as long as you brought it up, the, what about the noise? Is all the, is will the band be playing inside? Yes, there's nothing. I mean, they may have some speakers on the outdoor patio, but it's, it's on the inside of the facility. Yeah, yeah I know. Sometimes they get kind of loud, mm -hmm. so, you know, but, okay. And is there a noise ordinance enforced in there? Sure, there's a no noise enforced in the city. It's enforced by the police department. Okay, but what are the hours? Uh, I don't recall right offhand. I know it's a certain decibel at, at the property line at certain times of the day and night, but I, I don't recall right offhand what those are. Okay. And the band will be, what, mostly weekends or? I would imagine. Okay. All right. Sir, is your building soundproofed? Not a Okay. Wouldn't, I mean, wouldn't there be, secu if, if this is going to be more bar than restaurant, wouldn't there be security to there? I mean, don't they have security on the weekends or bouncers or something? Yeah, I'm sure if it was in a problem area where they had people that right. were creating so, a problem. They would have something or management or right. a bouncer or mm -hmm. something that would handle a problem. Yeah, I'm guessing Joe's Crab Shack didn't have, right? Didn't have security. I doubt it. And so uh, I, maybe that could be the difference. So you're, I mean, you're, you, you're open or you have to talk to the owner and see if they're open be willing to add landscape or some sort of structure there? No, to prevent I, I think that they parking. can do that. We haven't really got into the outside, but um, like the ramp that goes up to the front door uh, has the tall piers made to look like an old pier. So we'll probably come in and cut everything off that's above the ramp and the outside needs to be painted and it still has a lot of the stars and stuff from Crab Shack. Sure. So I mean, we're gonna cosmetically change the outside to clean it all up again, probably put a new roof on and and then retrofit the interior. Okay. All right, Stuart, when we change this, it still has to go to the city council? That's right, probably in about if three we weeks. Change it. I mean, if it's voted to be changed. Yeah, your recommendation will go one way or the other. Okay. All right. You were aware of that, sir, were you not? Okay. Are there any more questions of the applicant? Okay, thank you very much. Anybody have any comments?
Okay. The only comment I have is I understand what you're saying, sir, and I think if the, the property owner would be amenable to doing that and if you're willing to work with them, I think that's that would be that would be to your benefit. Um, I understand. I'm sure you do. <laughs> you can you it's because it's a public meeting you've got to talk through the microphone so <clears throat> what I was saying was I would love to see the building get occupied as much as everybody else I think it's beneficial for all of us I think we just need to discriminate a little bit in the business we choose to succeed uh, Joe's Crab Shack and maybe select something that's more family orientated than a bar uh, two doors down from another bar. I mean, is that what we want independence to be? That's, the, that's my concern. Uh, people parking in my parking lot, and they did it when Joe's Crab Shack was there. When they, you know, when they had massive crowds, the overflow ended up in my parking lot. And uh, you end up with trash and beer bottles. Uh, Joe's used to bring trash over and dump it in my dumpster. So, I mean, all those things just contribute to uh, less desirability for my tenants. That's what I'm concerned about. I've got a major investment in independence, and I think it's your responsibility, uh, from my perspective, is to protect the people that are already invested there and look at it from that standpoint and see if we can do something from uh, the Economic Development Council or whoever it might be to bring in uh, clients that are more interested in putting a family I mean, you, you're going after a very narrow uh, group of people, uh, over 21 that want a drink in a country bar. Just, just my perspective, just my point of view. Okay. But I think we already have that two doors down at uh, Grand Teton or whatever it is. Uh, I mean, you know, it, that's essentially the same thing, isn't it? They just, I think they compete. So is that what we're going to have on Jackson Drive now in, in Independence is we're going to have competing bars? Just, just my perspective. Thank you. Now I can close it, right? Public hearing portion is closed. All right, Mouseketeers, what do you want to do? Um, is this something like for the aesthetic part of it and then maybe dis distracting people from parking in the other lot? Is that a recommendation or a suggestion? Can we just put it into the notes? How do we? Well, um, if the applicant is willing to work with the uh, adjoining property owner, when they bring a building permit application through to modify the interior and exterior of the site, we can look for that on the building plans. Um, if the applicant c commits himself, we can't make that a condition of approval of the okay. rezoning, but if the applicant uh, can you know, swear they'll try to get something worked out, then we'll look for it when they submit the application to modify the building and site. I mean, I think we're here to decide the zoning part, really. I mean, That's right. not the content. Right? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, so... M m because of your position, there's nothing wrong with your position, but for us to say that this gentleman in this organization couldn't do it, that was kind of really denying it. If you had a lot more support or people here, it might be taken more seriously. But mm -hmm. since it's going to council, you probably need to speak with the councilman in the area and express your concerns because they have the final decision. Okay? Um, I don't, I, me personally, I understand your position. I don't think because there's other areas, uh, there's other businesses like that in the area. I just find it hard to deny uh, him doing that. It's almost, it's almost like you're the one that stands out. <laughs> you're the 
but one that's different with a different business. But I think uh, if you have a, uh, if he, if they do go ahead and get approved and they're willing to work with you, that would be better than nothing. So um, anyway, that's just my two cents and that's my feeling about it. If anybody has comments, they can also make them at this time or I can entertain a motion. Mr. Chair. Yes. I move that we approve, move to approve rezoning of the property of 2001 East Jackson Drive from zero, from 01 office residential to C2 general commercial. Thank you. I have a second. A second. Okay. <clears throat> Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Goldsberry? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner Wiley? Yes. Commissioner McLean? Yes. Chairman Ashbaugh? Yes. Case number 19-100-07, rezoning of 2001 East Jackson Drive has been recommended to go to City Council. That will be on the Council's uh, July 1st meeting. Okay. For first reading. Okay. Is there... Uh, any other items not on the agenda, Stuart? Uh, as you have, uh, as Miranda has told you that uh, we have a new planning manager, I believe the title is, um, development manager starting today. And he's a former employee of community development and then he w went up to become the city auditor and he's come back down to community development. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll go easy on him. <laughs> well, that's no fun. Well, for a little while. Right. <laughs> um, our next item is uh, minutes. Does anybody have any changes or corrections? Yeah. On the uh -oh. Reverse side of first page. Yes, sir. Other business. Item number one, second paragraph. I appreciate the elevation to chair, but. I think we'll stick with Chairman Ashcroft. Oh, you hadn't heard? <laughs> <laughs> You're taking over, man. I want to sit back for a while. Let's change chair back to us. <laughs> and I'm, I'm happy as a commissioner. And yeah, that is coming up in a month or so. Yeah. Beware. Here's your opportunity. When are we voting on that next month? I believe so. You bet you ready for the big chair, Billy? <laughs> I think you feel that chair perfectly well, uh, Mr. Come. Chair. <laughs> well, thanks. You have my full support. Yeah. <laughs> well, that makes me feel so much better. Thank you. Um, all right. Unless there's any other items, I believe we stand adjourned at 6.43 p.m. Thank you.